What the hell is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Robert Verdugo Podcast. Episode 36. Let's go, baby. Every single time I say this, I get so gassed for hitting that 50 mark. I'm so keen. Um, Yeah, welcome. It's going to be a detailed podcast on, as you obviously can tell by the title, it's going to be based on how to build a wardrobe from scratch or how to build a wardrobe from the beginning if you are in the midst of trying to revamp your wardrobe or, <clears throat> excuse me for that crazy little crumble right there, Jesus Christ. Um, but basically, this is for anyone who's, you know, torn on where to go when it comes to starting a wardrobe because I know how how stupid overwhelming it could be because I've been there and I'm going through that again pretty much. Um, just to give a bit of backstory, so but before we do, if you aren't aware, we upload a podcast every Monday and every Friday. I do apologize for not uploading uh, on time because, you know, I did this yesterday because I'm uploading this on a Tuesday. I did it yesterday. I just wasn't happy with it. So I thought I'd do it again. So I do apologize. But uh, make sure you check down in the transcript or in the description down below, wherever you're watching this, I will leave a link for a spreadsheet. Okay. And basically this spreadsheet, I got this from... I got this from a like a subscriber or a viewer like years ago. This is probably like three years old. It's this Excel spreadsheet, which will tie into today's podcast very well. Basically, it is a it outlines your entire wardrobe in a document where you can write down what pieces you have. Or let's say, for instance, you have a uh, pair of Rick Owen Dark Shadow Ramones. I say that because I really want a pair. Let's say I have these pair of shoes. From Rick, I paid, let's say, $650. i will write down the description of the shoe, write down where I bought it brand new or secondhand, and also just put the size, just in case. Um, this is what I would do anyway. Put the size down, description, everything, and then you put the price that you pay, and then it also has, in like separate columns, the depreciation value of a certain item. So basically, if it's a seasonal item, it might depreciate maybe 25% of the time. It's just a rough estimate because obviously the market does vary, and it really just depends on where you sell and how popular the item is, but basically it keeps all your, it keeps your wardrobe in check in a document where you can actually see how much you've spent on your wardrobe thus far, and then basically you just go through it and see what kind of pieces you have, you can even break them down into separate categories, whether it be trousers, pants, whatever, um, but this is very basic, so I will leave it down below, you know, it's not, I'm not paid to say any of this, it's literally, I've had it on my computer for so long, and I want to start utilizing it again, and thought you guys might make use of it as well. But this will tie into the wardrobe because I did a series on my YouTube, which by the way, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and also on YouTube as well. Go ahead and check it out. The YouTube is actually at Viduco Vibes because um, it's just my YouTube channel, which I post on. But I did a series a while ago. This is probably the end of 2018 where I decided to sell everything that I owned or most of it and start from scratch. And the one thing I didn't realize is how expensive it could get very, very quickly. I did not have like five bands to drop in one go. Not a chance. I had basically <laughs> basically nothing because most of it I sold to fund other stuff. And I kept a few pieces. Obviously, like the main things I kept from back then would have to be my Saint Laurent Ranger boots, which is just most beautiful pair of boots I ever owned. I will never ever sell them. I say that every time again, time and time again. I've got my Gucci loafers, which... I picked up in Japan like three years ago, never three years or two years ago, I think. Um, I kept that. I kept a pair of pants, like a pair of jeans or something. And that was it. Most of the other stuff I sold and st- tried to start from the beginning. And this is where I'm going towards now. I'm going to create a separate series on my YouTube channel, which will go in depth about certain like specific categories, whether it be trousers, tops, outerwear, whatever. But this is just going to be a breakdown on a mental, from a mental standpoint on where do you begin on doing something like this because it's your wardrobe is basically a reflection of yourself and also it's something where you want to showcase what you love and what you want to what you want to wear because basically at the end of the day I wear stuff like I wear clothing I wear certain pieces because I really like it and it's a really good reflection of me and not to mention I really like a certain style and so I feel like the style the style which I would like would suit me really well um, but that's not to say like different styles don't suit others because it's just all about confidence. And that will probably be for a future podcast too. 
on confidence and styles and whether, you know, whether whether or not you can pull stuff off because I feel like anyone can pull anything off. It just, you know, relates back to body type and all that stuff. But all in all, where do you begin when you start a wardrobe from the beginning and you don't have any idea on where to start? The first thing I would definitely recommend you do is take the time and make yourself a mood board. As weird enough as that sounds, starting a mood board will definitely get to see, you'll get to see your, you know, your inspiration, your creativity and what kind of stuff you'd like visually. Because look, you can picture yourself, okay, I really love workwear. I really love tech wear. I really love 90s or something. But it's just an... I'm not going to say it's a niche style, but it's a style where there's a lot of different fits that go with that one particular style and it's just too many things in your head to think about. Whereas if you throw it on a mood board, if you see certain stuff that you like, you can throw it onto a mood board. Like I've got one for my Instagram. I've got an Instagram handle called memento.gum and this basically is just what I'm vibing with. What's my inspiration when it comes to interior design in terms of color palettes, what I like in terms of an outfit, whether it be a straight cut pair of trousers with a bomber jacket, anything that I like, or do I see, yo, that's a really sick fit. I thought on my mood board and I look back on it in like, you know, a week's time, a couple of days later, I just like to go through it and analyze what I like and what I should buy for my own wardrobe. So that's probably the first thing you should do is just get yourself something, whether it be like a journal, you can even write down what kind of styles that you like, what you're feeling that day, or from a visual standpoint, you know, make a Tumblr, make a Pinterest is a very good one too. Pinterest is very, very easy to do because you can just browse and Pinterest has a very, very good algorithm. I said very like five times. (laughs) I'm so sorry, but basically Pinterest, it's a great way to, you know, the algorithm works because you see one particular fit and I don't know how it works. I, I could not tell you how the fuck that shit works. But you click that one outfit and they're just so similar outfits and different color palettes or different style or it's the same style but different fits. And I don't know how they do it, but you're then you browsing like half an hour later and you're seeing through like 10, 15 different fits that you could rate. Um, and that's a really great way to just throw in a board within Pinterest and you can have it right there. And you can do like a variety of different boards within your account. You can have like minimalism one, you can have avant-garde, you can have workwear, it's all separated, which is good. But in my case, I like to just go through Instagram and then sometimes I probably should go through Pinterest a lot more. I just can't be bothered, to be honest. But um, basically what I like throughout the day, I'll screenshot, throw it on there. So that's probably the first step you should do is find a way to visualize all your inspiration, chuck it into one place. And then from then on, you will get to see what kind of color palette you like. And that's probably the hardest thing. And even till today, I'm not that quite... I'm not going to say I'm an expert because I'm fucking not a chance. I'm no, not even close to being a color expert, experts, but you should, you know, suss on what colors you like, whether it be like an all black wardrobe. There's nothing wrong with that. I personally love an all black wardrobe and messing with textures and materials rather than anything else. And then you can even branch further and go different shades of black. You can have like a really, really washed black color palette. You can have like borderline charcoal you can even mix up and go with the gray and then if you want to push the boundaries even more you can add white to it you know because someone that has an all black wardrobe i would assume would not like to branch with color so white is probably the next best option because they just go hand in hand but if you're not too sure on what colors you like i would just really suggest we'll go on black and white it's the easiest color combination to do it's very straightforward and you can find a lot of pieces and a lot of you know pieces i was going to say a lot of sneakers as well but just garments in general you can find in that color palette it's really easy and it's very easy to style because that's probably the hardest thing that people would find is how do you style stuff like this so my color palette for the time being is i used to like used to be like all black like just rocking all black wardrobe happy days but lately you know i'm looking at like my wardrobe because I'm, I'm mostly hang everything because I don't like having stuff folded because then sometimes you just forget that it's there. But most of it, I'm playing with, you know, the olive and green color palette. I really like it. I don't know why. Um, I made an ASOS order. It came in like a couple of days ago. Got a pair of cargoes from Weekday, which I didn't know that Weekday is actually owned by H&M. And I could kind of tell in the tea that I got. So I got this like olive green tea and then the same color in a pair of cargos. 
I'm not going to rock like an olive green, an entire olive green fit. That's not going to happen. But, um, you know, the actual cargo's green, top's green. I've got like mainly like black trousers. <clears throat> I'll try to say, oh, I also have like another olive green or like khaki green pair of acne trousers, which are like work wear. So this color of green and different shades of green and olive and khaki and stuff, that's slowly going to make its way into my wardrobe. And then I'm messing with like brown, beige. I really like the off-white tones as well. Not the brand because fuck the brand. But the color of an off-white or a, a bone color, I think is just really pleasing. It's not crispy white. So you don't have to worry about getting, you know, you know when you wear a tee and you wear it for a while and you sweat and you take it off and then <laughs> if you don't wash it, that shit's going to go yellow. It looks terrible. Um... Whereas like you can play with that natural white color, which I think is really nice. And it's very easy to wear as well. Um, but that's probably like the main palettes, which I'm looking at. I just ventured into a, you know, a really over dyed blue shirt from our legacy. <clears throat> it's like a blue, like a light blue with pin, with uh, vertical white pinstripes. And it's just an over shirt. It is beautiful. I absolutely love it. You know, put on a fit today just to see, cause I've got a pair of trousers today, which I got altered. And I'll tell you about that in a sec. Wore that fit just inside the house just to see how it looked and all oh my days. Oh, it's so good. Because, <laughs> like, my thing is I like the way our legacy goes because it's a it's just workwear, menswear, but minimal, but it's not. It's so hard and so intricate to say, but it's its own thing, and I think it's very easy to pair our legacy pieces with other pieces of clothing, and that's going to lead into my next point. Find pieces that blend well with other stuff, okay? And when it comes down to the basics, all you need to do is get yourself some white and black tees. Got to go Uniqlo. Go Uniqlo U if you can find the opportunity to buy it. Get yourself some white tees, some black tees. I like to get different sizes. I like to get like a large. I get an extra large and then sometimes a medium Um, because the thing is, there's nothing worse than wearing an oversized tee and then wearing like a shirt underneath or sorry, on top, because it looks disgusting, <laughs> it's, it's terrible, don't do it, get yourself a nice slim fitting white tee, and wear it underneath anything as an underlayer, or get yourself singlets, okay, cotton rib tanks are like the go-to, I always wear them every time I get the chance to wear an, like an overshirt, I'll wear the, the singlet, and I have like a pair of, I've got like a three pack of Dickies singlets, and unfortunately they don't make them anymore, so I'm trying to find something that is very close to it, but I can't find it, okay? And they're like super slim fitting. They keep like your proportions in check so you can wear an overshirt and not look so bulky up top. Keep the nice slim silhouette and then you can just, you know, go with whatever pair of trousers that you want. But all I recommend is get yourself some singlets, get yourself some white tees, some black tees, and then venture into a different color palette later because you just want to get the basics down pattern, all right? Get the white tees, get the black, and then from the bottoms... All you need is just black trousers. Now, in my case, I'm not going to tell you exactly what to get because everyone is different. You know, everyone has a different price range. Everyone has a different style. Everyone likes different shit. And that's just, you know, how life is. My In my case, I all I went, a pair of Dickies 874s. I got them hem today and there was a pair of trousers which I got today. So I got, I got them in like two days ago, went to my grandma's, got them altered and got them today and they are just gorgeous. They're so clean, so simple, straight cut, not too wide at the bottom and not too slim either and I think they're going to pair a lot with different stuff. And I bought them because I needed them for work because I'm starting full time soon and I need a pair of Dickies trousers or needed just a black pair of trousers. Dickies, 80 bucks, couldn't go wrong and then the grandma, the abuela just decided to help out and alter them and they're at a really nice length too. I do want to get like another couple pairs just for different lengths. <laughs> it's funny enough as that sounds and like first world problems, but these ones are like the break is borderline too long for me. Funny enough. It's like, it sits nice, but then I want ones that are just like a little bit higher with a break. So I can wear with loafers, wear with low cut silhouettes. That's it. I don't care about anything else. Um, and then you can branch to different colors as well when it comes to Dickies trousers. I want to get like a nice maroon pair. I love to get like a bone color as well, like a workwear pair of pants that are like a bone or like an off-white or natural color. Poor, I just think they're so fucking clean. And I'm definitely, definitely going to keep my eye out for something like that. 
But trousers, all you need to do is just find a nice pair of black trousers, whether it be Uniqlo, whether it be Dickies, anything that you can find that, you know, you feel like you suit or you like, grab yourself a pair of just black, simple trousers. And then venturing into a different pair of pants, you need to get a pair of denim pants or denim jeans, okay? I have like this washed pair of black ones. They're pretty good. They're vintage. So they cost like 15 bucks. They fit pretty good. They're really baggy at the ass right now because the walks are starting to pay off, fam. And I'm fucking keen for it. <laughs> but all in all, like these used to be fit like pretty well, but now they're just too big for me. So whether or not I'll alter them, I'm not sure. But just get yourself a pair of just, you know, just a pair of jeans, man. Jeans have been around for decades and centuries, man. It's fine. Like, it's just a staple in everyone's wardrobe. Get yourself your nice, your favorite wash. I like to get, you know, it's not like the light acid wash. It's like the the dad jean color. You know that dad jean light wash? I love that wash the most. I think it's just pleasing to the eye. It's a little bit lighter, but it's not too dark. And if you want to, you know, if that's not your style, you can go with like a salvage color, like a salvage denim, which is like super raw, super deep in blue, borderline navy. And then it has that tints of orange because like the salvage, I think that's just, you know, a very good staple to have as well. And that's something I don't have. So I have to look for something, you know, I know Uniqlo U for their fall into 20, I believe, which I actually did a reaction on my YouTube channel, which will be out this week. They actually brought out a pair of salvage denim, which is, you know, pretty pretty inexpensive too. It was only like $60. Whether it's going to be as high quality as other high T brands, probably not, but it's a very good entry-level piece to have. So I'm probably just going to grab some of those and just beat those to shit for a while until I, you know, find something that suits me more or suits me better. But all in all, get yourself black trousers and a pair of jeans. Those are like two staples that you need. Get yourself some white tees, some black tees, different sizes if you want, and singlets. That's like... You've got basically half your wardrobe done because you can mix and match a variety of different fits, kind of. You know, you can wear an all black fit, you can wear a white tee, black trousers, whatever. Um, and then moving from that, you definitely this is the part where it's probably the hardest is sneakers and boots, because that is very personal, because everyone is different. You know, I like, you know, I like a beaten pair of Air Force Ones, but someone might think Air Force Ones are super thotty and just don't work. That's fine. I used to think that, kind of. I don't like crispy air for crispy AF ones. I think they just look too eh. Like I would honestly, if I could find a pair on Depop that are my size that are beat to shit already, I would buy them. <laughs> but my basic, my essentials, I would go for a pair of Vans old schools, which you know, just everyday beater. You can wear them anywhere. It's a casual shoe. Converse Chuck Seventies, uh, Chuck t- Chuck Taylor highs. 70s versions which have the yellowed sole it just looks a lot more vintage a lot more worn in and they're comfier too so a pair of converse chuck taylors and also uh what was the third shoe that i was going to say air force one converse oh oh <laughs> oh i kind of forgot oh you need a pair of boots man <laughs> holy shit you just need a pair of boots and that's like the hardest part you know do you want to go to a chelsea boot do you want to go to a combat boot do you want to go for a you know, simple, something simple like a loafer, that's all completely up to you and it really depends on what your lifestyle is like and, you know, think about your ideal date night or your, you know, your, the fit you'd wear when you go out. Would you wear boots or would you wear sneakers? Are you that person that rocks Stan Smith's uh, with like really skinny trousers <laughs> or are you like that person that wears like a nice straight cut pair of, you know, straight cut pair of like canvas trousers with a pair of boots whether it be like a chelsea boot or loafer it's up to you that's just very personal um in my case i would definitely go you know i'm looking for uh nike blazers i feel like that's an essential for me because it's a nice high top it's simple it's cheap too um also like i said old schools i want to find like a vintage pair of old schools i know essence just had Ah, I saw it a day too late in all honesty. I'm, I'm so annoyed, but I found a pair of Vans Old Schools OG Lux, which a, it's a pair of old schools which have a yellowed sole and yellowed laces. And it just looks a lot more refined, if that makes sense. It's not just like your regular pair of old schools, which I think are pretty clean. Um, Converse I already have. I would love to elevate it to like a reconstructed pair, but that's not a staple. All I need is just a black and black pair of Converse and I'm happy and then I keep thinking of the third one, man, and I can't think of it. I honestly can't. I'm honestly 
I'm out of my mind because I don't know <laughs> what it was, but those are like my key things. And also, I think it's pretty staple to have a pair of sandals. Um, I am currently going to get within the next couple of weeks, a pair of Sui Cokes because I really miss them. And I was actually looking back at a video, which I did, and it was like the brand of Sui Coke. And I just looked at them and I was like, holy shit, they're <laughs> so clean. Um, I think they're just like one of the best sandals to have. They're a little bit pricey, but they're well worth the money. Um, or you can just even go, I've had these like Birkenstock wannabes from Kmart. I've had these for like two years. I wear them all the time. Um, I would love to get a real pair of Birkenstocks. And that's probably like another key essential is a pair of sandals from Birkenstocks. I think they're just like a staple that people should have. If you're into that, mind you. If you're not into sandals, then just ignore everything that I just said. But sandals, boots, sneakers. And then you need like a run around casual shoe. And that one for me is just my converse. Um, and then I've got to say for the bottoms, track pants, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. Get yourself a pair of fucking track pants. Whether it be Champion, Stussy, Uniqlo, it's up to you. I say Stussy because I'm in the market for something like that. I think they're just really clean. Um, or like go to's Champion. I just think they're staples. And then for the top half, you know, we went, we covered the tops, okay, but you need a pair of, you know, a nice clean hoodie and a nice clean sweatshirt. I think Champion is probably the best way to go just because it doesn't break the bank and they're pretty, you know, accessible. You can find them everywhere. My best bets to go to Reverse Weave. I think Reverse Weave Champion hoodies are the most comfiest hoodies, but I would definitely don't want to, I want to find, I did own one. I sold it because it was just too thick, honestly. I don't know if it was just a different style of reverse wave but it was way thicker and more heavier than anything i've ever felt but it was a reverse wave champion hoodie but it only had the logo on the sleeve at the actual cuff so near the cuff it had the logo and that was it didn't have you know the chest logo of champion which you know when it comes to me i just want a blank black hoodie that's all i care about so i bought that at like urban outfitters when i was in hawaii this was like three four years ago i've owned that hoodie um but champion's probably your best bet or you can go Gildan, okay? Gildan's probably even easier because it is a lot cheaper. And the quality is not, it's not trash by any means. It's not bad considering the price that you pay. So I definitely would say get yourself some Gildan hoodies, get yourself in like a black charcoal, you know, whatever color palette you like. But they're just essential, man, like pretty easy. Um, but the next thing and the hardest, and I won't go too much in detail because once again, this is all down to personal taste, is outerwear. Now, outerwear can go a variety of different ways, and this is probably where your money is going to be mostly spent, most definitely. And I can tell you, I had a shit, shit selection of outerwear pieces. I had nothing. Even till this day, it's starting to grow, but it's not enough. It is definitely not enough because you can't go wrong with having a lot of outerwear pieces because you can wear them all the time. And you can mix them, like you just, you know, you can just wear black, you can, like, I'm getting a bit overwhelmed because I'm thinking like, I'm getting gas from thinking this, but all you need is black trousers, white tee, and then the outerwear piece is the statement. That is like, that's just like the nail in the coffin. That's where the fit is mainly seen from. That's where like, that's where, that's where the bitch shines, okay? And the outerwear, look, I'm going to be real with you, it is very hard to find what you like when it comes to outerwear. This is like my thing is that I really love over shirts. I really love thick jacket shirts or like a shirt that's in a jacket form. So for instance, I actually ordered an our legacy over shirt jacket, but it's an over dyed black with contrasting white buttons. I think it is super clean. It's oversized. It's boxy. It's just hella clean, man. But it's an outerwear piece because it's a lot more thicker fabric and it's classified as a jacket. So I know when I get it in, I can wear this all day, every day, because technically it's a shirt, but it's in the form of a jacket and it's a lot more wearable in that case. Um, another one, which I actually got in um, not that long ago was the Essence Order, which is another Our Legacy piece. I've bought so many pieces from them right now. It's actually insane. But once again, it's like a bone Harrington jacket. It's a little bit longer, but it still classifies an overshirt. And I think it's just super clean. I love the design of it. I love the four pocket design that they have and I love the color I just think it's super clean so in my case I know my go-to if I see something that's like a really really thick oversized overshirt that is like that's spank on man I just think they're really easy to wear 
in a variety of different seasons because that jacket, you know, you can wear, you can wear that on a like spring night or a summer night. You can wear, you know, an overshirt that's not as a thick fabric. You can wear a little bit something softer, but you can mix and match. You can wear like a singlet underneath. You can wear like a, you know, if you want to wear like a basic bowler shirt, you can wear that underneath and have that as like your layering piece when it comes to the summertime. It's really up to you. But those are like my go-to. Then you've obviously got like puffer jackets. You've got military jackets, like an M65 jacket. You've got, you know, just it's like simple zip-up jackets as well. It's a variety of different stuff, which is very overwhelming. And when it comes down to it, you just need to do a bit of research and find out what you like. In my case, I really love overshirts. I really love puffer jackets. And I really love military jackets. I just think they're super clean. And they're super easy to wear. And that's my main philosophy is finding shit that's easy to wear. Because the only thing that's probably the hardest is finding that crazy statement piece that you can only wear once in a while. Because, you know, if you wear that statement piece once and you wear it again, if you're with people, they're going to know it's the exact same thing that you wore because it's so statement-y, if that makes sense. <laughs> if that's, that's not even a word, but you guys know where I'm going with this. If you wear like an overshirt that's got, you know, it's not so much as a statement piece, but more of an everyday essential, it becomes part of your uniform and people know you for that. And that's when you bring out statement pieces every now and then. Um, For instance, like I know, I know I'm going to get this one day for sure. It's my Rick Owens puffer jacket. I just think they're fucking incredibly clean. They're cropped, they're white, they're bulky as shit. But depending on what color you get, it's a statement. It's like you wear that and people are going to know, like people are going to remember that piece. And that's one thing as well, is in your wardrobe, do you want to have pieces like that or do you want to have essentials? And starting off, I definitely think don't invest in a crazy statement piece at the start. Do that later when your wardrobe's kind of, you know, found its own style, if that makes sense. If it's kind of, you know, once you've had that wardrobe for a while and it's a reflection of you, that's when you can branch out and get yourself some statement pieces. Um, The one piece of advice which I'd like to give out is definitely don't be afraid to throw in different colors in your wardrobe, even though it doesn't match, because I actually have hints of red within my wardrobe. Weird enough, I don't own any red trousers. I don't own any, technically I have a red jacket. It's my Ben Uckles jacket, which is like my favorite piece of clothing in my wardrobe. But I have like this Uniqlo U red t-shirt. It's like thicker fabric. It's really random, but wearing that in just a pair of black trousers and a pair of boots or a pair of sneakers, it's like most random color, but it works. I'm also wearing, (laughs) I just completely remembered, I'm wearing an orange hoodie, which is a Mac Miller Circles merch hoodie, which, okay, it's merch, it's fine, but it's a random color, but it doesn't really, you know, it's not really going to not match with my wardrobe, if that makes sense. I can still make it work by having random colors, but wearing monochromatic stuff with it, if that makes sense. So that's probably my one piece of advice. Don't be afraid to just mix and match different colors that don't really work because don't forget you have other pieces in your wardrobe that can work. You can go back to your statement, to your simple pieces of black tees, white tees, whatever, and make it work. Um, but that's probably like all in all, that's, there's not really much else to really, you know, building a wardrobe than finding your state, finding your simple and essential pieces that are like white tees, black tees, black trousers, find yourself some simple shirts that are within that color palette. But the main thing I you know, I want you guys to take from this is just find your style first before you splurge. That almost rhymed. I'm pretty proud of myself. Um, look back and think, okay, will this suit my wardrobe? Is it a wearable piece? And will it, you know, blend with the other pieces that I have? Because that's like the main thing also which you need to take on board is make sure you don't buy stuff. This is like, there's a lot of people out there, including me that have done this, is you buy one piece of clothing that's on sale and then you've got to change your whole wardrobe around just for that one piece. And it's like, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. And you actually lose a lot of money from doing that. You need to find pieces which can correlate with one another in your wardrobe. We can, you know, the main thing I always look for the piece or like mainly like top half is kind of wear this with whatever, like my favorite pair of jeans or my pair of trousers that I own, whatever. I always just picture the fit that I could wear with it in a variety of different ways. Because for instance, my Our Legacy Overshirt, which I just bought, which is coming in soon. I'm very fucking keen for it. 
I know I can wear that so many different ways because it's almost an essential but a statement at the same time. I think think I feel like it's more of a statement piece because of the fit of it because it's a lot more exaggerated in the shoulders, the sleeves are a little bit longer and it's a lot more boxier than your regular overshirt. Um, but the color as well, it's very easy to wear in my wardrobe. I can mix and match different colors with it and I think it's just, you know, pretty simple to wear. But when you wear, if you buy like, you know, a different color pair of trousers, you know, should I, can I mix my outerwear jackets with this? What kind of jackets do I own that can mix and match with this? Um, and that's honestly, it's just a, I feel it's just a learning curve when you, you know, start to buy a lot of shit. <laughs> it's definitely, um, you start to realize what you like and what you don't like. And um, the one thing I can say is, it's it's expensive, okay? It is fucking expensive. <laughs> that's all I could say. Um, that's why at the start, be prepared to drop like, uh, I would say like maybe like 800 to a grand on like essentials. And that's like pretty budgety as well. Because you've got like trousers, t-shirts, shirts, sneakers. That's already like 800 bucks right there, bro. And then you got to find time to find time and money to figure out what kind of statement or like outerwear piece that you want. Um, but I would honestly just go with like overshirts or shirts or vests or jumpers, jackets, whatever. It's completely up to you because at the end of the day, it's your style. It's a reflection of you. I'm not going to tell you, you should go out and buy this because, you know, what I like and what you like is completely different. You know, you might think a pair of Dickie's trousers are so fucking basic and are so boring, but I think they're just really intricate and simple and it's intricate and simple at the same time just because of the cut of it and they're very easy to fucking wear, honestly. Um, or like a pair of Rick trousers people won't like, but I generally like the fit of it. I like the style and the aesthetic of it. That's fine. And I think they're very versatile pair of trousers. Um, and at the end of the day, a wardrobe needs to be a versatile as shit. That is like versatility in a wardrobe is like essential, bro. That is the, like, as the pinnacle of a good wardrobe is mix and match in every single piece in your wardrobe that works. Um, but yeah, I think I covered mostly everything. I do want to say, don't forget to check the transcript or the description down below. I will have that spreadsheet for you guys. And I'm actually going to fill up my own with all the stuff that I've bought over like the last month and a half. I've bought a lot, a lot of clothing, mainly outerwear. Um, I've focused a lot on outerwear because that part of my wardrobe is lacking a lot. Um, it's always been like a weakness. <laughs> It's always been a weakness in my wardrobe is jackets and shit. I just don't ever find money or time to find something. And because outerwear, most pieces are pricey, okay? Yeah, you can find stuff thrifted. Pfft, don't get me wrong. You can go and thrift. I found a bomber jacket. It's like it's called like a Gryffindor jacket. That's why my mate called it because it's brown and black and gold. But um, I found that for like 12 bucks and I've worn that. Pfft, I've worn that to the ground. I've worn it fishing. I've worn it on my like late night walks when it's raining, even though it's like 100% wool and 100% leather. I want it fishing, rain, when it rains on my walks, I wear it when I go out, whatever. Like I just, it's just a, once again, versatile piece and I paid the peanuts for. So if vintage is your wave, definitely go out and just find some on Depop or, you know, in our case being in Victoria, when Salvos and stuff opens up and Savers, yeah, you can go out and, you know, find something. But like outerwear is definitely lacked in my wardrobe and I've definitely taken a step back to think, okay, fuck buying trousers, stuff buying like sneakers and shit right now. I just want outerwear pieces. Um, and I've gotten a fair bit. Uh, it's a bit concerning. <laughs> I got like this Uniqlo U like trucker jacket. It's just an all black borderline denim jacket, but it's just a black jet black, um, trucker jacket from Uniqlo U. It's like three, four seasons old. I found it on some website for like 25 bucks. I decided to pick that up. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. It's $25. It's something for the wardrobe that I know I could possibly wear. I'm going to crop it eventually because I think it's just a tad bit long. But like I bought that. I've got my Our Legacy Harrington jacket. I've got the Still See Our Legacy collab shirt. Um, what else did I fucking get? Uh, that's really much about it so far. Ooh, that's a bit concerning. <laughs> I feel like I need more. <laughs> Oh, and then I also got the Our Legacy Overshirt, the overdyed one. But I'm going to be in the market to find something military. I'm really, really, I don't know. I really want to go like vintage Helmet Lang really badly. But once again, 
it's just money, man. It's just a lot of money, and I need to find like a coat. Um, and I think Uniqlo U will be the next wave for fall winter twenty. There are like a bit of key pieces here and there that are good for outerwear, but then I'm also lacking on sweatshirts. So I won't lie, man. I don't have a perfect wardrobe. My wardrobe is pretty fucking shit. On <laughs> in all honesty, like I didn't have much. Um, I've got like a pair of Rick trousers coming in. I'm very keen for. I got like Dickies trousers, just like I need them for work, but I actually can wear them fucking all the time now, which is pretty keen. I'm pretty keen. But, um, what else? Tees and stuff I don't buy. Yeah, maybe a vintage tee every now and then, but t-shirts I'm just not looking to buy because I don't need any unless it's like a crazy vintage Batman tee or like a film tee or a movie tee, then yeah, but that's different. And then sneakers wise, I have a pair of Nike blazers coming in, um, but that's it. Like, Sneakers is a hard one for me. Sneakers and boots. I do want to buy another pair of loafers. Um, GH Bass is a brand which I'm pretty keen for to grab because they're actually pretty affordable. They're only like 150 to 200 for a pair of loafers that are decent quality. And there was also a brand, but I don't remember what the freaking hell it was. It was this um, Argentinian Soul loafer. <laughs> I'm Googling this because I found a pair of loafers that used a Argentinian outsole, which was, you know, pretty interesting to say the least, but I don't remember where the hell I found, like where I found the brand. I don't know. I'm going to keep looking, but I'm probably not going to find it. Let's be real. Um, but those are just some things that I'm looking at right now is another pair of loafers, just get some, another pair of trousers, mainly in focusing on out on outerwear. Um, which can be very, very pricey. But you guys let me know what you are, what you're going to venture into, what kind of style that you really like. Because right now for me, it's the military and workwear vibe. And that always has been me with a hint of like minimal, minimalism menswear. I don't know. That's just really a weird label to say, but I just really rate that. And they, you know, they all correlate with one another. It's pretty easy to wear all that shit. Um, and they're pretty good for everyday use. So yeah, with all that being said, um, don't forget to, uh, you know, subscribe to the Spotify, the SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, and also on YouTube as well. So with all that being said, I'll leave you with a nice tune to end your Tuesday, and I will see you guys on Friday. Take care. Peace.